If you would uh, turn with me and just uh, a, power a note on today's PowerPoint. I uh, didn't know what I was thinking, but every place where you see 1 Peter is actually 2 Peter. <laughs> so uh, on the PowerPoint, when it says 1 Peter, 2 Peter, so don't be confused. We'll try to rectify that for next week. But this morning, we're going to start a new series. And I've entitled the series, and it's not a... Uh, it's not a cheesy Las Vegas wedding chapel. Um, the title of the series is The Ladder of Love. And you'll see as we progress through the series what we mean by that. And it's in pursuit of Christian maturity. How many here this morning are thankful that you are not who you once were? When we accepted Jesus, there was a change. For some people, the moment they accepted Jesus, there was a big change. For others, there was a little change, but there was a change. And if anything, the change was that on the inside now, you felt forgiven, you felt clean, you felt like you had a brand new future, and you felt like you, have, you had an eternal home with the Father in, in heaven for eternity. Eternal home in eternity. You know what I'm saying this morning. But how many are thankful? And I dare say there might be some people, there are many people within the body of Christ, hopefully none, who are here. But how many thankful are thankful that you are not the same person you were after you accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior? Amen. You can look back at the weeks, months, years of your Christian life. In fact, John told us uh, last uh, told me last night that yesterday was his 49th birthday in the kingdom of God. When I, when I said 49th birthday, I saw some faces of astonishment. <laughs> Amen. But how many are thankful you are not the person that you used to be? You're more like Jesus. But how many realize, and we all need to realize this, and we're not quite, and, and I'm speaking for myself this morning, we're not quite where Jesus is. We're not quite where Jesus wants us to be. We still have some maturity. I still have some maturity that I need to attain to in Christ. And that's the, this obtaining Christian maturity is the theme of this series of messages. And in our theme text, and we will be spending a lot of time on this text uh, this, uh, in these messages uh, is from 2 Peter chapter 1, verses uh, 1 through 11. And it deals with uh, this fact, this, this calling that is upon our lives to become more and more like Jesus each and every day. Let's read our text this morning uh, before we begin uh, the message, Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who through the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ, have received a faith as precious as ours. Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. For this reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance 
godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But if anyone does not have them, he is nearsighted and blind and has forgotten that he has been cleansed from his past sins. Therefore, my brothers, be all the more eager to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never fall. And you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's bow our hearts together and let's ask God's blessing to be with us as we worship Jesus through the preaching of his word. Father, we thank you so much for your goodness and grace. And thank you for this time that we have to break together the bread of life, the Word of God. We ask once again, because we so desperately need your holy anointing upon us. Give words to this, your speaker today. Give us ears to hear what your Holy Spirit is saying. And may, Lord, we have an insatiable desire to become more like you each and every day. And we ask this in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen, amen. and amen. One of the responsibilities of parents, and I think the goal of parents is that our children, and in some ways, you know, uh, especially now that I have two grown children, one child who I, I can't believe is going to be 30 this year. Um, <laughs> it's cliche, but it really does make you feel old. Uh, but yeah, you wish they could be kids forever. But one of our responsibilities is not the only responsibility, but one of the great responsibilities that we have is to prepare, in the short time that we have them, our young children, our children, to become adults and to assume the responsibility of adulthood. Our goal and our desire should be that uh, when our, our, our children uh, reach, reach, reach uh, the age that uh, they're ready to move on with their lives and start families and their careers and so on and so forth, that, that they have the ability to deal with the issues of life in a mature manner. You know, it wouldn't, wouldn't be terrible, but I think we've all seen individuals who react to disappointment or frustration or, or, or tragedy like a two-year-old child by having a fit. And one of the goals that we have is, is helping our children and one of the desires that we have is when our children get old that they're able to cope with and deal with all the curves that life, curveballs that life will throw them. We want them to be able to take care of their personal finances. And uh, <laughs> through, through the years, the, the chief complaint <laughs> that I've had from parents about their children is their children, adult children, calling them for money. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. Scra scratch that from the record. <laughs> we want our kids to, to be wise enough to take care of themselves to live healthy lives. We want them to get to the point where we know, you know, we don't have to coddle them. You know, I, I've used this illustration before, but you know, in, in some families you see when one child, it's their birthday and they get lots of gift, they gotta make sure that this one child who can't, can't handle it has a little gift for them to open even though it's not their birthday. And, you know, and, and that's understandable for a toddler who doesn't understand, but you, we shouldn't have to do that when someone's in their 40s. You know, mom's birthday, but here's your gift so you don't cry and whine. And we want them to be able to function out in the world, to be able to hold down a job, to work with their friends and neighbors, to make friends, and to contribute in society, and of course, as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, we want them to be able to 
believe God and serve God on their own without mom and dad having to egg them on. There is in uh, psychology, I guess you'd call it, uh, some instances delayed development in children. And a lot of children experience that in different ways. Some children, it takes longer to learn how to tie their shoes. Some, it might be to speak or to walk. And, and it could be a serious thing, or it could just be they're going at their own speed. But interestingly enough, the uh, World Health Organization, I think back in the um, around 2005, mid 2000 teens, changed the date of adolescence from which was prior to that, ages 10 through 19, extended that out to the age of 24. I actually thought in preparation for the message it was adolescence was in the 30s and seeing the behavior of some uh, young people, but we, we can't. Um, we can't, we can't uh, label all young people by the actions of just a few. But they have extended adolescence, and the reason they have done that is because young men and women in their early 20s are waiting to assume some of the responsibilities of life, of family, marriage, career, and so on and so forth. And there are many reasons for that. It's not just delayed development. And there are also some political and societal repercussions from that that we won't get into today. But as is in the world, is so often in the church. And in the church, and I hate to say it, not because I haven't enjoyed what my calling, but I've been pastoring for a long time. There have been far too many believers in the Lord Jesus Christ to live in a state of delayed or arrested development. They're still in diapers. They're still, you know, I think they've, they've, they've outlawed them now, but they're, they're still, when my kids were little, we had the, the, the stroller with the wheels on it. Not the stroller with the wheels, but the little round thing with the wheels and you know they'd zoom across the kitchen floor and whatnot. They still have that now? Yeah. Oh they do? Okay I thought, I thought it was dangerous so they they got rid of it. Yeah, they're, they're still in there. They're not walking on their own. I remember talking to someone and we were talking about some of the frustrations of, of ministry and, the, and it's like having a, an adult person that you still, and Paul had this frustration as well with the Corinthian church. It's, it's, it's like having an adult person and, and, and opening up a can of Gerber's and saying, it's time for your dinner. Open up wide. And it's someone in their, you know, in their 50s. Paul relates to this. Paul found this in the Corinthian church. I wish I could feed you meat. But because you're so immature, I've got to feed you the milk or the elemental things of, of the gospel. And, and may I say at the beginning of, of this series of messages, when I talk about maturity, I'm not just talking about having a greater knowledge. Knowledge is important. And may we never cease to strive to know to know more about Jesus. And may we also do our best to retain what we've learned about Jesus. Because let me tell you today, it's, it's not the theme of my message, but it's an important point. If you don't stay in the word of God, you will lose what you have learned. It's just a matter of being a human being. Dr. Lundstrom, the founder of this church, one of the most brilliant individuals, uh, as far as knowledge of the Word of God, told me himself when he came that because of his age, and, and he could still preach, but because of his age, a lot of the things that, that he once knew, I, I think he could actually recite uh, the New Testament in its original language of Greek, that he had lost just because at that stage in his life he wasn't able to keep up on it as... 
But getting back to the point, it's not just knowledge. You can be the smartest individual in the world and still be a big baby. Still cry when things don't go your way. Still be, be able to uh, not able be able to emotionally handle you know some things in life and you know I'm not speaking to those who might have a an emotional condition and and may God's grace and peace I understand people do have that and and I'm not speaking about those who who ha have a condition I'm speaking about those who refuse to grow up. The church suffers in no small way from a Peter Pan syndrome, Peter Pan being the, the childhood story of the boy who lived in Neverland and never grew up. There's some people who never mature in their faith, and as we mentioned just a, a few moments ago, there are some who have made great strides, but for various reasons, are now stagnant in their faith and they're no longer growing in the Lord. And let me tell you, that is just as bad, and we'll talk about it as we progress through the message this morning, stagnating in your faith, thinking that, that you've arrived and there's no longer any need within you to grow and to become more like Jesus is just as bad and just as detrimental if you are still in diapers, if you got born again and you never did anything with it. You know, and, and let me tell you, oh, how we all struggle with that. Let me tell you, I'm not, I'm not preaching with a, a finger pointed down this morning. I'm preaching to myself this morning how easy it is for us to become stagnant in Jesus. In fact, may I say this morning, it is harder for us as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ to mature in the faith than it is, than it is for us to mature as human beings. And the reason for that is this. It's great to see Karen this morning and Elias this morning. Great to have you folks with us. The reason is this. You don't have to really put much effort into growing. You just have to forgive the expression, stuff your face and your body will take care of the rest. In fact, I have a, two, I have a little uh, maturing that I, I want to uh, recede. I kind of want to go backwards. The maturing process, even the emotional process of being able to deal with you know, anger and emotions and handle things responsibly, just happens as we grow older, as our brains mature, as we go through life. We, a lot of times we don't have to try too hard at all, but that's not the case when it comes to our Christian faith. In order for you to become more like Jesus each and every day, it requires your, yours and my full participation if we're going to see it happen. You can stay a little boy or a little girl in the face for the rest of your life if you so choose. But it's God's will and it's your privilege that you become a giant in Jesus. Let me share with you just a few things about spiritual maturity before we get into the text this morning. I haven't been going that long. i got a timer on here. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Two verses, Ephesians 4, 11 through 13. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors and teachers to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity of the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature. Attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. That is what God's will is. 
that should be one of the major reasons, not the sole reason, but one of the major reasons that we are here today. We're here today because we want to glorify God and we want to do so in according to God's will by assembling ourselves together in a spirit of love and unity. We want to be available to one another to minister one to another. But we also want to expose ourselves to God's gifts to the church. In this case, the fivefold ministry, apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher. In order that we might become everything God wants us to be. Not just to be smarter, although knowledge is important. Not only to be unified, we all believe the same thing, and that, of course, is very important. But that we might become mature. And you, can you imagine? Do you ever read the New Testament? Do you ever read the Gospels? Are you ever in awe as you look at the way that Jesus Christ lived lived and spoke and acted and, and how his heart was always perfect before God and man. What is this, among other verses, saying? That we may not only become mature, but that we might be attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. We can be not equal to, but just like Jesus. That is God's will for you and for me. Right along with that, Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, For I am confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Jesus Christ. This is a process, bless God, that will continue, that, that should start when we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior. And if we're passionately following Jesus, we'll continue to the day that the Lord Jesus breaks the sky and calls us home to be with him or until we breathe our last, last breath. Now let me say something about that because some of you might be sitting there this morning and you might be saying to yourself, Pastor Randy, doesn't that sound contradictory, these two verses that you read? The first one that you read said that we can obtain the whole measure of the fullness of Christ, but then Paul says in Philippians, the same guy says that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we'll be answering this question as we look through this scripture over the next several weeks. But the answer is this. God is, is, begins at the day that you accept Jesus if you open your heart and if you pursue him with all of your heart will begin to form within you everything that relates to the nature of Jesus. In fact, they're laid out for us in, I can't remember which verse offhand uh, from our text. I think it's verse 4, uh, verses five, 5 through 7. And over time, not only will he birth them through his spirit, into your heart, into your life, into your practice. But over time, as you pursue Jesus, they will become greater and greater and greater. And you know what that speaks to me, and I hope it speaks to you this morning and every day as you serve Jesus. That as much as I receive from Jesus Christ and as much as God is doing in me I can look forward to tomorrow because I know God is going to do something even greater within me hallelujah 
That's satisfactory life. In fact, I'm, I'm jumping a little bit ahead in my notes this morning, but that's why stagnant people feel dead inside. Because they have lost the vision that God has more of them, more of His Spirit, more of His grace, more of His truth. N next week, I'm assuming Joe's going to talk about His power, more of His power and His glory. As much as we might have obtained, God has more. Over the course of the next uh, several weeks, I'm not exactly sure how many weeks it will take, I thought uh, we're not going to get, we're going to be ending pretty soon. Uh, I'm debating how much to actually go through my notes today. So I want us to center and focus on, on the important points. We're going to take a look at what does Christian maturity look like. We're going to take time to talk about the roadblocks to Christian maturity. Touch on a few of them today. What is the process? There, there's a, there, I believe that this scripture lays out a, a process of growth. How many, uh, how many, you know, um, I won't ask how many. <laughs> uh, uh, and you may have. But um, I took, uh, you know, different math classes. And, and uh, in college, I took calculus. And um, I actually took calculus two twice. I dropped out the first time. I took it again. Let me tell you this about calculus. You can't go from addition to calculus. <laughs> if you do, you're going to have a hard time. You've got to go from addition, subtraction, multiplication, then to algebra, geometry, then trigonometry. And if you, I won't say master because you never master, but, it, but if you can get a handle of that, then you can kind of graduate to, to calculus. There's a road map that the Apostle Peter lays out for us as far as obtaining the full measure of the person of Christ. And we're going to take a look at that. And then lastly, we're going to talk about the means of spiritual maturity. But before we begin, let me give you the short of it. The beginning of our walk of faith, or our relationship with Jesus, I actually gave, out, gave away the beginning, is saving faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Trusting Jesus as our Lord and as our Savior. That's the beginning. And the ending, according to this verse, but also many others, throughout the New Testament, is the love of God, the love of Christ, full in our hearts, demonstrated and overflowing to the Lord Jesus Christ and to others, whether they be believers or not. I could actually end the whole series just by saying we begin with faith and we, we realize that we have all maybe not in fullness, it's still growing, but we, we, we've reached the top of the ladder when we love the Father and we love others like Jesus loved. Having said that, what is maturity? And this will be our last point this morning. 2 Peter 1.8, if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's exhibiting godly qualities, qualities laid out for us in verses 5 through 7. Make every effort to add to your faith goodness, goodness knowledge, Knowledge, self-control, self-control, perseverance. 
Perseverance, godliness, godliness, brotherly kindness, brotherly kindness, love. It's to have these qualities birthed within us through the power of the Holy Spirit and the ministry of the Word of God. It's for us not to only have a breakthrough in faith, in love, in goodness, in godliness, in kindliness, but to maintain them in Jesus' name. You know, believe it or not, I used to jog. <laughs> I'm laughing because the first person to laugh was my wife. It wasn't very long. It was long before I met you. It was back probably uh, 1982, 83, somewhere around there. It wasn't, and, and it started rough, but I built up where I could jog a while. You wouldn't want to see me jogging now. <laughs> well, it wouldn't take too much time <laughs> for various reasons. Because if you don't maintain body condition, you lose the ability of what you can do. And so it is with godliness. It's not just something, hey, I love someone today. I forgave someone who didn't even deserve it. I forgave them. Phew, I can cross that off my list now. Something that we must maintain and do and do and do. And, the, and may I say regarding love, the greater the offense, the greater that we need to love in Jesus' name. And as we mentioned, these qualities must grow. They must become more mature. And, and, and may I say I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but... Part of the growth process is not only by feeding uh, on the Word of God, not only but by spending time in prayer, not, not only by walking in the power and the might of the Holy Spirit, not only spending time with other brothers and sisters and saints and, and, and exposing yourself to the ministry of God's Holy Word, but God is going to put you in situations and circumstances where you're going to have to believe him more than you believed him before. More deeper, more dire circumstances than you had been before. To be kind in situations where it's a lot harder to be kinder. You know, just... Mean old people. <laughs> and the more kind you get, the meaner that God's going to have you be kind to people. <laughs> the meaner people God will send in your life. Because as I mentioned, stagnation is death. It is not possible if you have something living and what you receive from Jesus is a living, breathing life, new life, if you are not growing, you are dying. You know, I'm, I'm not a biologist or anything like that. But I know the things in my, you, you know, this shell that I inhabit, that God will resurrect. I don't want to totally discount the body. You know, God will raise it up. But the different cells and things that were in existence at my birth are no longer there. They've been replaced by newer cells. They continue to, to change and to grow. And if for some reason something in my brain clicked off, and my body no longer began to regenerate, I would die. I don't know how long it would take. I'm not sure the, the lifespan of a cell, but it can't be too, too long. I would die very, very quickly. And people who are not growing 
in their faith. It's not just a matter of being bored with your relationship with Jesus, which is, that's really, really bad. But you are on a path to dying, to losing your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I hate to say it, but I have to be truthful. In fact, even though Peter talks about making your election sure, it's God who does it, mentions this, alludes to this in this portion of Scripture. So let me close by saying this this morning. Let us make a pledge in our lives to grow. Amen? And to mature, to become more than who we are in Jesus. Because if we choose not to grow... Either we've never grown in the first place, we've, we've, never, we, we've received Jesus, but didn't do anything with it, didn't pursue his heart, didn't pursue his spirit, didn't pursue his word, didn't pursue relationship with, with other saints, didn't pursue service. Not only will, is our development arrested, we'll die. And if... You know, back in the day, man, I was, you know, I was all that. I was in my Bible. I was praying. I, I was doing this. But now, yeah, I've retired. If you cease to grow, or if you become stagnant, you die. And the death is slow. It doesn't happen instantaneously. You don't just automatically lose your faith. Over time, gradually, you feel... You feel God is getting farther away from you, but actually you're getting farther away from God. And the farther you get away from the Heavenly Father, the harder it is to believe and trust with Him. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. You, you do not have a relationship with Jesus if you no longer have faith in Him. For it is by grace you are saved through faith. But don't be downhearted or discouraged. Because the Bible tells us in verse 3 that his divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Although there are many forces against us as far as moving forward in, in, in Jesus, and that actually a point I was going to get to today, but we'll get to next week. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. God has given us everything we need to grow in him and to obtain to that full measure of Christ. Can you say amen this morning?